It's yes. rated G. Totally rated G. Really, Joe? We get more viewership. <laughs> We get more viewership. <laughs> Good at oh. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Jackcast. It is We get more viewership. Day one. <laughs> Good at oh. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Jackcast. It is one perfectly flawless. <laughs> right you, keep hitting, you keep hitting the yellow button. Uh, the it's either the green button, button or the red button. I told you about that. One of these days, we'll get this to go flawlessly right from the very beginning. Of course, okay. it didn't today. Anyway, let's get started. So, I made no mistakes. Yeah, it's, it was totally me. It had nothing to do with you. That's why they pay me. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Everybody, welcome to the Jackson Kayak Podcast this week. We have Joe Pulliam. We have Joe Pulliam. Um, why don't you give a brief intro as to who Joe Pulliam is? Uh, well, first of all, I'm, I'm going to give the intro in the form of a thank you. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, a lot of us go through uh, life and business and in personal uh, uh, with kind of mentors and, and examples and, and folks coaching us along the way. And I've been very lucky in life to have that kind of thing happen in my dot-com era and in my adventure sports uh, life, and um, when Jackson started up, um, we were blessed with the presence of Joe Pulliam, who's been able to help us mentor uh, through a lot of pitfalls that we probably would have fallen into. Uh, Joe's been around a long time, uh, founder of Dagger Kayaks, Perception, and God knows what else out there that that uh, have spun into the you know a lot of the great historic landmarks and and moments in in paddle sports um so we're super privileged uh, to have joe aboard with jackson kayak over the last few years and uh he's been uh, i guess his app title is coach joe right joe no oh, that's one of many titles i've, I've been <laughs> oh, called of course so joe i think let's start off the top nice. and talk about you and your history in the world of paddling i think that it's a good idea to sort of frame that before we uh, get started um and just so that everybody who's watching live knows joe is here to answer any of your questions james and i will be keeping an, an eye on the facebook page so if you have questions just type them type them below over uh, under here somewhere and and we'll read them and and figure out uh some of the best questions and give them to Joe. But Joe, let's go back to you. Tell us a bit about you and your history in paddle sports. So you got uh, 30 minutes, sir. Go. <laughs> I'll watch the clock. Uh, I, I, um, I started going on canoe trips when I was uh, probably a preteen with, uh, with a fathers of a couple of friends of mine who didn't want to go with their dad. So my other friend and I went and we went canoe camping and as intrigued as I was by canoes, I was, I was, I had uh, seen a couple kayaks here and there and I was totally fascinated by kayaks. A friend of my brothers in, uh, when they were in grad school in Duke had a kayak. I was the first one I ever saw. And I thought that is the coolest thing. Someday I'm going to do that. And when I, I got my first canoe, I think I was 14 years old, probably 1969. I started at Clemson University in 1973 and met people who owned kayaks and even more significantly met people who uh, met a, a guy who made kayaks. And so in 1973 uh, it was when I first started paddling kayaks and also started making kayaks. And um, the first time I ever paddled a kayak, other than just getting in one for a few seconds with the owner there, I promptly, uh, I borrowed it from a, from a friend and I promptly wrapped it around a bridge piling at the uh, bottom of, uh, of uh, a class two rapid. Um, but um, Anyhow, we started making uh, we started making kayaks, and uh, basically, my life was probably thirty uh, percent know, schoolwork, uh, ten or fifteen percent everything else, and whatever else would add up to one hundred percent was kayaking and either making them, paddling them, doing something, and that um, was was my college days paddling three, four, five times a week, and 
uh, mostly on the Chattooga River, which was close by, but a you know, handful of others. And um, it went it went from there. And I uh, ended up working. Um, I'd been part of Perception. From Perception came out of a group of us that were was uh, Perception was basically really sort of the the the, the 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 daddy of uh, kayak business in the in the U.S. and um, um, we uh, that came out of a group of us that were in college together and um, I left though and went and did other things and then came back and ran marketing and sales there for uh, five years or so in the uh, early seven in the in the early eighties. Continued to paddle all through this time, paddled wherever I could, and um, mo- primarily in the southeast, primarily whitewater, but uh, um, and continued an interest in canoeing as well, but got, got kayak focus for sure. And um, then in uh, left perception in 1987, worked briefly for Blue Hole Canoe Company. And that didn't work out very well for uh, reasons that I needn't go into here. Um, and in 1988, we started the Dagger, what was then the Dagger Canoe Company, for two first two years of which we made only only canoes, and then we made uh, we made some kayaks, including some pretty pretty well known ones, and um, uh, we made canoes, we made kayaks, we made touring kayaks, we made whitewater kayaks. Uh, we made wreck boats, and anyhow, that that was great. That lasted until we ten years later we sold it, did well financially selling it, and uh, worked for the company we sold it to, which was interesting because we also purchased Perception at the same time. So I got back involved in Perception, and we went on purchased some other brands, including uh, Adventure Technology AT. We purchased uh, Yakima was the most significant one. Um, uh, Harmony paddles, a number of things outside of the paddle sports world, um, and sold all that in um, seven years later. What was that? Two thousand and five, I believe. And then since then, I've acted as a consultant uh, in the paddle sports world. And for the past six, seven years, I've done nothing but work for Jackson Kayak. And continue to paddle. Don't paddle nearly as much as I I, I have in the past, but um, occasionally get to do a, a fun trip like uh, I did with Will in um, in Puerto so we, Rico. We some kayak fishing and <laughs> yeah, well, uh, what can you say? Um, but anyhow, I, and I, I, I paddled the Chattooga last weekend and was have a I have a, a an airplane uh, flight booked to go to Boise on Monday to. Do a middle fork of the salmon trip, which unfortunately now is not going to happen um, due to uh, to water conditions. The group felt like it was too high, so I um, I would have probably gone anyhow. But I um, but I don't have that choice. But still paddle when I can, um, not as often as I once did, but um, still still a big well, big part so, of my life. But in that last. Five minutes of summary, Joe. You've you've touched on a lot of different eras in in whitewater and paddle sports. Uh, what do you see as the difference then versus now? Is there, uh, if there is, what kind of differences are there in, in running a business in that era? Well, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's it's continually changing. One 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 real difference when I started kayaking. I mean, basically, all boats were four meters long, or, or, or you know, thirteen feet two inches long, and sixty centimeters wide, because that was the ICF slalom regulation. So, all boats were made for for slalom. Now, slalom is such a tiny um, niche, high end part of our our sport. One I'm still intrigued with, but um, uh, in those days, so you, yeah, you know, if you ran, if you ran, if you were a, a river runner, if you were a club type, if you were a hair hair boat creaker, as as there was such in in that era, uh, if you were a slalom paddler, it didn't matter. You, you used basically the same boats. And I started paddling right at the at the transition of, yeah, you know, we all we all used made and used glass boats, but the holoform came on and was 
Um, you know, it was not a very, very good boat, but certainly the technology that was there in terms of using rotomolded plastic was going to going to change everything. So I've seen this tremendous change in, you know, boat designs becoming, you know, specific to play and to, to, to creaking, to river running, and the, the evolution of the material go from, you know, from, from composite uh, to, for, for, most, for most people and for most uses, and what we're involved with at Jackson being almost all rotomolded polyethylene, um, certainly skill levels have advanced hugely um and it's it's it, it's you know it's it, it's it's interesting to have seen how people have built on uh how boats have evolved built on you know one generation builds on what was learned from the previous generation to the next and the same thing has happened with paddlers you know when 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 the early 70s and we we're paddling section four of the chatuga you know the average the average paddler thought, you know, you, you're the you're the crazy guys, and and now you know people are paddling section four of the Chatuga after, you know, after, you know, after a month of paddling, and that certainly was at that in those days the expectation was you paddled for 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 two or three years, then you might want to try that, and um, you know that's that's uh, so things like that have changed a lot. I, I paddled the I went for about. 20 years between trips on the Watauga, which is a great class four North Carolina run that was, you know, when we ran it in, in the seventies and eighties, we ran it. At, uh, even if we were, even if we'd made the trans, when we had made the transition from class boats to, to plastic boats, we still ran the same lines that we would have run in, 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 in glass boats and which meant avoiding rocks at all costs. And, knowing that you're in a, in a long boat that, that doesn't turn. And now, you know, the last time I ran it, I was in a in a, um, a dagger. Uh, uh, excuse me, I still use that word sometimes um, when I don't mean it. Um, right. In a Jackson Hero, I was like, wow, this used to be so hard. Now it's, yeah, now, now it's really easy. So, you know, the, the equipment is, the skill levels have increased. Um, but the equipment has allowed that to happen and made it made things so much easier. Yeah, no, I I was just reading actually earlier uh, an interview done with you, and you know you're just trying out the hero for the first time, and I think we've I think everybody's come a long way, Dagger ourselves, Wave Sport, and other manufacturers. Um, but uh, well, I'm not sure right. Wave Sport should now, fit into I, that I, category. I see I see a away, lot of but. trend all of a sudden to go go retro you know with the mullet mullet and the yeah. flat stearns yeah. and now the antics with us is that is that a kind of a something you see as the future of whitewater kayaking kayaking in general or is is there something else in the future as well well i think there's something else in the future i don't know what if we know what it is right now but i think the you know the 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 going retro thing to me it's i don't look at it quite that way i look at it that over the years whether it was squirt boats, whether it was there was at one point there was a real trend to go, you know, that people were paddling open boats a lot more. I think there's, you know, as 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 people as the elite level gets so much higher, I think a lot of people get scared off a bit from being, you know, at that level and want right. to want to step it back down. And having having boats that allow you to go out and have fun on. On, on class two or class three or water and, and play on eddy lines. And I mean, there, there's, there's a whole lot more eddy lines out there than there are great holes. And there are a whole lot more people who can enjoy going out and paddling class three or class four or class two water than there are who only, only want to pad, paddle class five all the time. So I, th I think of it as, I think, I think that's what squirt boats did. Unfortunately, squirt boats were, you know, incredibly <laughs> uncomfortable and, um, and had, had a, lot of, a lot of other limitations, so that kind of, you know, never went anywhere. You know, not say never went anywhere. It's still there. It's still viable. It's still, you know, one. But it's at it's at the elite level. Um, open boats are great, but they're heavy and challenging, more challenging to use. And the, the challenging part is is good in a lot of ways because that's what happens with a lot of these boats. But you know, the 
boats where you can you, you can stern squirt and have fun on class class three water and are great surfing boats or whatever. I think people who have only grown up in the last few years and only paddled big boats and you know big creek boats are now getting smaller, more nimble, playful boats that aren't you know, that aren't play boats and aren't you know do have some speed and 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 comfort it's like wow you know this is uh this is this is pretty cool so i think it's a cyclical thing and i think i do think we'll see more of this this type of boat in the future and um you may see some more from i want to remind uh, everybody who is watching that if you have any questions for joe now's the time to throw them down other than a request for you to sing all of basketball jones from beginning to end by jim salmons i've never heard of him Uh, you see yeah, I don't. I don't really know that guy. Um, we don't have any questions yet, but uh, this is your time to ask. The question I had for you, Joe, is: it's you've got an interesting perspective on the industry because uh, you sort of saw it from a lot of the inception side of it. Who were your heroes, and inspirations that sort of that sort of took you along the way? Um, well, from a from a, I guess I could I could I could name ones that were inspirations more from a paddling perspective and I could name some others who are more inspirations from a uh, you know from the business side on the paddling side uh, gosh I guess the you know the, the great thing is 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 I people who people who were my heroes on both fronts here are people that I got to know some became some of my very best friends and others I knew at you know at a lesser level but you know, on the paddling side, um, gosh, I'd have to name you know Rob Lesser, uh, possibly at the top, and Rob and I are are still you know very close. Uh, Chris Spedius, who I uh, got to paddle a lot uh, a lot with over the years, and um, and make uh, make a lot of a lot of fun trips with um, Rusty Dunbar, who was a good friend of mine, and not not as well known nationally or internationally as some of the others, but was a one of the, uh, you know, one of the best boaters ever to ever to paddle a kayak. Um, so John Ludbull, um, you know, hero of heroes almost in in many ways. Uh, Payson Kennedy from from NOC. Um, Richard Fox for any of you international people out there. Um, uh, I'm sure I'm missing some, but those uh, and, and now watching, you know, watching. You know EJ and even more so, and, I, and EJ and I go back, you know, many years and watching his, you know, his abilities. But watching, watching Dane Jackson is is a uh, is a, he's he's um, he's sort of in a he's sort of in a league of his own and it's just really impressive. Um, um, Pat Keller, who I don't haven't been on the with, water with as much and don't know, and is is obviously. Uh, uh, not part of our team, but he's uh, he's a real a, a real joy to watch. Um, from the industry side, um, oh gosh, you know, I guess my first uh, hero, and it was such a such a thrill to meet, and it's particularly um, um, good now in a way because he's um, he's he's uh, uh, recently passed away. It was Tony Prion, and uh, just uh, sort of the father of the modern kayak industry i would say um um but i could i can i could think of some others but he's Very he's cool. the first that comes we, to we, mind you know we keep talking about our inspiration and the folks that we kind of get to surround ourselves in this industry one of the things i've really enjoyed about jk is and you know over the last few years there's been a, a bunch of really great people joining us both in the factory and next to us sometimes um is there any just maybe give have an opportunity now to maybe shout out to some of the great names at, at Jackson, some of the people that are kind of moving the needle that we, 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 we have at the factory these days. Oh, we, we have got, I mean, the, the, the talent level here, here is just so, so strong. And, and it's, you know, from the, the, the behind the scenes people like, like, uh, Brad Cisco or, or, or Tony Lee and uh, some of the you know some of the people in in customer service and our, you know and working with James and and Marty Cronin on the marketing and sales side and, uh, and and gosh Colin Kemp is just what a what a solid 
wonderful all-around guy he is. Guys, some of the guys out in the factory making the boats and doing the work out there, like uh, Jace is uh, Jace Bolden is uh, uh, one of the you know more incredible people you ever you'll ever meet. A class five paddler, a great a great uh, a incredible a play boater and. A, uh, fish, you know, fisherman. Of, I mean, you want somebody to catch fish, lo- show you local fish around here. He's he's great. Some of our team people, you know, just uh, getting to work with the likes of uh, Jim Salmons to to Drew Gregory, uh, Steve Fisher. I mean, it goes it goes on and on. I, uh, um, you know, much less. Uh, you know, it didn't men- didn't mention Emily Jackson. I mean, she's. You know, Emily's. I, I, I enjoy being on the water with her um, as as much as almost anybody I know. She's just just a joy. So um, yeah, you could go on, and certainly a big shout out to uh, to Dave Olson, our CEO, who I work you know hand in hand with, and is uh, is just a um, you know just a great guy. There's and, a few and, from. Um, and, there's a few uh, from your Dagger Perception days too, right? Tony Lee. Yeah. yeah, Tony Lee, Terry Lee, yeah. John Rose, uh, Scott Henderson. Um, um, always forget <laughs> things when I'm being asked on the spot. So, so to, the, to those I'm forgetting, leaving out here, please forgive me. And and of course, uh, James, you've had you too have had the joy of doing uh, Grand Canyon trips with uh, mm-hmm. our co-founder Tony Lunt, who's uh, who's uh, quite the uh, quite yeah, the character. The reason I brought well. that up is. Is Tony's texting here, messaging here, asking you to talk about the old days? <laughs> Tony Lee. Tony. <laughs> oh, Tony Lee. Tony Lee is on there asking me to do that. I, just, I do Tony have, Lee, I do Tony have Lee, a Lee, question from work. one of the audience members. Jeremy Howell asks, Joe, how long has history shown each unique type of boat to last? Specifically, what's your thought on the current fishing sit on top kayak market, and why are we at the beginning, middle, or end of that cycle? Um, what's that sort of, what's the forecast on the longevity of, of those markets? Well, you know, it's, it, it, I, I would say that varies. I mean, you know, sit on top kayaks for fishing started, um, from, you know, my perspective, there were, you know, there was, um, started in the, in the mid eighties. And have evolved, and there have been a couple of pretty significant uh, leaps with that. And I think one that we were, uh, and that I was right in the middle of, and that we really elevated things hugely was the was the the Kusa with the with uh, with a lot of unique features, including the 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 high low seating positions. That was a big innovation. I think there's still a lot more to happen there. So no doubt, I mean. It, no doubt, um, uh, we're we're nowhere near the end of the sit on top uh, fishing cycle. Um, I would probably say we're in the middle of it because it has come so far. It has been around a long time, and there does seem to be, you know, does seem to be a life cycle. I mean, the 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 one of the hottest segments in the paddle sports industry for ten years or so, ten or fifteen years, was the fourteen foot. A sort of light touring boat, and there's probably you know a quarter of those sold that as as were sold ten and fifteen years ago. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say we're I'd say that's a, a really good question, but and I certainly don't know the answer. But if I had to guess, I'd say you know there's another this is this is gonna there's still a lot of innovation to happen, and and it's going to be another. 10, 10 to 15 years of some pretty cool stuff happening. And after that, who knows? I, I, it, it's, it's hard to, hard to say what, what will take its place, but, um, um, I think it's, I think, I think it, it just makes so much sense Jet and it's so much fun. Fishing. We'll all have like little jets. Don't, <laughs> oh. don't, don't oh. give that away. <laughs> Dang it. I'm giving away all the secrets. James, we had a question about, uh, you wanted to talk about some of the charity work. That yeah, uh, uh, Joe and I were talking a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, both he and I are kind of active outside of paddle sports, and um, I kind of shook my head. I asked a quick question, thinking I was going to get a one-word answer, 
uh, I asked him, I said, Joe, uh, I, I, I remember you were working in, in some charitable work and maybe some conservation. Uh, what have you been doing these days? And there was a long answer. What was that long answer, Joe? <laughs> 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 well, maybe I'll try to make it a little shorter. You know, I, you know, over the years I've been in, involved with a lot of, you know, a lot of things. Um, uh, earlier on, more more focused on sort of my passion. I went to grad school in in environmental sciences, and um, but have, have and, and did you know I was on the American Whitewater Board for many years, the ACA Board for many years, um, and some local environmental groups is deeply involved in, it, and still. Still, uh, still involved in some um, from uh, a group in southern Arizona where we're where I own some property and my brother lives and we're trying to um, we're 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 doing I say we I'm I'm minorly involved and we're bringing back some uh, really working on bringing back native species but also from a water standpoint of of, uh, of basically rewatering some of the streams on the on the the right along in the borderlands of of southern Arizona and northern northern Mexico. Um, work we worked uh, worked with a group really did a lot of work on getting two dams removed on Twelve Mile Creek and in, um, in um, or Twelve Mile River as it's sometimes called in in upstate South Carolina and uh, and getting a big PCB mess cleaned up there and opened up. Uh, uh, about a three-mile stretch of Class Three whitewater that had been uh, impounded since uh, the turn of the, la- the last turn of the century. And but but more recently, uh, I've been been doing more work with the um, with the uh, the uh, underprivileged and and um, uh, less fortunate people in 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 our communities and working with uh, with everything from uh, tutoring. Um, Kids out doing tutor after school tutoring for for kids and working with uh, an after school and summer program um, for uh, underprivileged kids. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm, and I'm still involved with some organizations there. Also doing a a I'm on the uh, I'm the treasurer and on the board and a founding member of the a group. And and later this month, we will be opening up a a uh, health care clinic for the un and underinsured in a medically underserved area in uh, in Greenville. So that's been a, a big project that, that I'm pretty uh, pr- pretty proud to be playing a small part of. There you so go. It's very cool. It, ironically, Chris, Christopher Dvorak, uh, I'm not sure from where, uh, says, this man is a class act. Good to see you recognize people that aren't part of just Jackson Kayak. So uh, kudos to you, Joe. I want to wrap up. I want to wrap up your interview today, Joe, with uh, one last question, which is: uh, Do you have any advice for young paddlers out there, guys that are ju- that are just getting out and getting started in all of this mess? Well, I think I think anybody anybody who uh, well well first word of advice is uh, be safe. You know, if, if you're on uh, no matter where you are, wear a PFD. And I've been involved in a lot of safety. Uh, Issues regarding paddle sports over the years. Um, I think the other the other advice I'd give is um, whether you're a whether you fancy yourself as a whitewater play boater or a fisherman is learn learn good strokes. You know, I, I see people who are really really highly skilled um, at various things, but really are not very good paddlers. If that makes sense, they really aren't aren't that skilled at putting putting their craft where they want it to go. And I think no matter what you're doing on the water, um, whether it's through videos or taking some instruction or whatever, learn how to um, learn how to use your paddle to put your boat where well, it needs I'll, to go. I'll, I'll, I'll pimp uh, do it. paddleeducation.com, a uh, great little uh, resource for everybody. We, have, we actually have a full curriculum Absolutely. now for kayak angling, so uh, based uh, lightly on – uh, touring paddle strokes and safety tips uh, it's all there so yeah, paddleeducation.com James you've got some a few events you wanted to shout out about before we go today what yep. you got a uh, couple of things first off uh, this week if you go to jacksonkayak.com you will see on the front page first image that will appear that the nirvana is now shipping uh, killer boat killer uh, boat that's a quote from Joe Pulliam and he knows uh, we got a lot of quotes happening on Facebook about that boat from Steve Fisher Eric Jackson 
a uh, bunch of folks really enjoying that boy a boat very really good review from Boyd uh, Rupelt as well uh, go out there look at look at it uh, boats are heading towards demos uh, and dealers as we speak find out for your local dealer where you can demo one uh, awesome boat second thing uh, sidebar related uh, story or Orion coolers is now shipping Metallica I repeat Metallica coolers <laughs> Araya Kula. Uh, uh, so check are you, out. Are you guys doing the tumblers too? Is there like a uh, no, no tumblers yet? Uh, just the Metallica coolers. There, there are tumblers. There are Metallic. There are Orion tumblers available website. on the True. Metallica there we go. website. So uh, OrionCoolers.com slash Metallica. And believe me, there are two L's in Metallica. I did not know that. Huh. So check that You've been out. Spelling it wrong all this time. I have been spelling it wrong. Uh, uh, the, the the real big event this this uh, weekend is the GoPro Mountain Games. We will be covering that on our Facebook page. Emily Jackson, of course, leading the way with our social media diva stuff. Uh, she will be there with pretty much our entire team, and that'll be the first great glimpse. The home stake rate will be, race will be a great glimpse of at our uh, Nirvana boat. So there we go. Awesome. Let's go on. And we have the big event of the release of the. Uh, Kusa FD coming up in as yeah. here really really soon be shipping to dealers and that's an incredible. There's a lot of product. people super excited about the FD. There's like another six questions about the FD. I know we that's we've been fielding questions about the FD while we were talking to you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies. Before we go, I just it's, gotta. But the answer's easy. It's I'm just going to do a couple of quick uh, bits of bookkeeping before we go this week. Uh, please remember that we do this every Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard mm -hmm. Time. We have an interview. Basically, we swap once a week, so we do something about fishing, something about uh, whitewater. We'll try to get some recreational paddling content in in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we have some cool boat announcements coming up in the next some, com some cool announcements coming up in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. In order to find us, just always look on the Jackson Facebook page. That that's where this whole deal lives. We are working on getting this into a podcast format that you can download onto your iPhone or your iDevice in the next little while. But that's, uh, that, that is still forthcoming. Uh, Joe, thanks very much for joining us this week. And thanks to all the people at the Jackson Factory for making great products. And, and good luck to all the Jackson people that are involved in events this week. There's fishing events going on. There's whitewater events going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, there'll be a lot of crazy stuff happening. Uh, that's it for us this week. Remember, if you are not a fan of the Jackson Kayak Facebook page, you should be liking, you should be subscribing, you should be asking questions. And if you have any other questions for Joe that we did not answer in today's cast, just put them below, and we'll make sure Joe gets them, and we'll try to get you those answers. Cool. Now get out and go paddling. Get out. Now. And go. Let's go. Sounds right. good. I Bye. got my beer. Thanks, Joe. Pretty good.